All right, here we go. Hopefully this worksheet wasn't too hard. Let me take over your screens. It's still a screen, Bobby. Yes. All right, here we go. Check your answers, and then we'll go over any of them that you want to go over. Was that a cat or a kid? Mac, did you get uh, your, your FET up and running with Mr. Rosen yesterday? Okay. You guys checking? Now, next Monday, we're going to do a uh, quiz. No, next Monday, we're going to review. And Tuesday, we're going to have a Canvas quiz on this. Maybe it'll be allowed to be a grade. All right. So that's it. That's the end of questions. Any one of these uh, you need me to go through. Okay, let's go through that real quick. I have too much on my screen. Right now, it's not allowing me to use my pen. OK. Can you all see this, NO3 minus 1? Five, six times three. Are we okay, Tyler? Plus one, 24. And two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. 18, 20, 22, 24, done. Okay, well, let me continue for anybody who's not as confident as you are and did not get it. So 24 electrons and nitrogen is missing electron pair right here. So when we have put out all the electrons and somebody's still not happy, and it's not one of our exceptions like boron and beryllium, then we have to go with a double bond. But which one do we double bond? Well, that ought to tell you right there. If you're asking that question, the sucker resonates. You choose one side, but in reality, it's all the sides. Now, where people go wrong here is that sometimes they don't understand whether this is polar or not polar. Well, 
what is a dipole? Polar means to be a dipole. What does a dipole mean? Di means two sides. Well, is that a dipole? No, that's a monopole. That has only one side. It is just negative. In order to be a dipole, you got to have a positive and negative. So even if this was not a polyatomic ion, it would still not be a dipole because in essence, all three sides are the same thing. By the way, this is trigonal planar. Angle is 90. And the hybridization is SP, SP2. Any questions? All right, let's go back. What do you want to see in more in depth? Anything? Good question. Remember what to ask yourself when you are deciding this. Two questions. How many sides do I have? In this case, I have one, two, three, four, four sides. That's why it's tetrahedral. Second question, are all the sides the same? And no, they're not. You've got three that are BR negative or BRs and one that is F. And F is definitely more electronegative, so everyone's electrons are going to be leaning toward the F, since it's better looking, making the F side negative and the not F side positive. So this becomes like a little magnet. Negative, positive, polar. This one, how many sides? Six, are they all the same? Yes, not polar. This side, how many sides? Four. How? Well, this is still a side. Two, three, four. Somebody has a television on or something, can we shut it off? I'd rather not mute you all. Okay, then close close the door. All right, these four sides, are they all exactly the same? No, because of this pair of electrons. So you need to look on the electronegativity chart. Who is more electronegative? And I believe phosphorus is, so that's your negative side. That's your positive side. Any other questions? Well, beryllium, boron, I just have memorized are exceptions to my rule. Boron can bond three times successfully, and that's it. And beryllium can bond two times successfully, and that's it. So you simply do not have the electrons, and you don't have to double bond. Beryllium has two, seven, seven, sixteen. That's it, sixteen electrons. No double bond needed because beryllium is happy with four electrons. So we're talking SP hybridization. That's linear. Thank you, Tyler, for asking questions.
it would thrill me to know that the reason why you guys are ask, are not asking questions is because you know how to do these. But that would be great, Bobby. All right. Going once, twice. So let's go to the rest of this week's assignments. First of all, if you, you you need you need 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 to make sure you sign up for Gizmo. One class got filled up, so I added another class. That other class I think is called Chemistry Two. So there is a new code now. If you've already signed up for Chemis for Gizmo, that's it. You're in the first class. You understand? So. No, Bobby, you'll need to email me and I'll look it up, but I'm not going to look it up now. Okay, so I need everyone to sign up for Gizmo because you'll you'll like Gizmo a whole lot better. The FETs, it, it's kind of like FET. It's just, it, first of all, it doesn't work off of Java, so you don't need Java. Uh, second of all, the graphics are much, much better. They're almost... 21st century, I think some of the FETs were made in the 90s. So you're really going to like the gizmos, uh, but you need to sign up or else you won't be able to do it. So if you haven't signed up, do so now. Use this code. If you have signed up, ignore this code. Next uh, next week, just go straight to the using the link that I gave you. All right, so Thursday... We're going to do how microwave works. This will be a review. Maybe it'll go into a little more detail, but maybe you did not remember how I explained it, and this will real explain it. And then Friday, you do have a FET, and it's based on uh, it's based on what you learned on Thursday. We're not going to do Zoom. No Zoom on Friday. I know it says that, but we're only allowed to have two Zooms a week, so no Zoom on Friday. All right? We will return on Monday. We will go over the FET on Monday and review for the test. And then on Tuesday, call it a quiz, call it a test, whatever. It'll go over chemical bonding. And then next week, we'll start on the chapter that we didn't quite finish. And we're actually going to start moving into some new stuff. Just don't tell anybody. And it still won't be for a grade unless they decide this week that next week we can start phase two. But it'll be easy stuff, whatever it is that we go into. The last nine weeks, this nine weeks was not was was going to be easier than last nine weeks. The second nine weeks is the hardest. The first is the next. The third is next. And the easiest nine weeks was the fourth nine weeks. Just everything has built on itself. And now we can actually talk about some very practical things. So it is a shame. It is a shame. We were going to talk about gas laws, which we see gas laws working all around us all the time. We we're going to talk about assets and bases and solutions. Most of what we deal with in 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 the real world are solutions. We were going to do ice cream lab, which has to do with colligative properties. Colligative properties is the fact that the impurities in water can actually affect the boiling point and freezing point of water. That's why we add salt to the roads. That's why we add salt to the ice when we're making ice cream. That's why you add salt to water before you boil it. It increases the boiling point. We were gonna find out this nine weeks why a pressure cooker is used in order to cook meat faster. You can either slow cook it for eight to 12 hours, or you can fast cook it for one or two hours with a pressure cooker. Why? We were gonna find that out. So using a gizmo that we're going to the gizmo that we're going to do next week, 
we will at least be able to get into that. Why do we use pressure cookers? All right. Have a good weekend, guys. And hopefully we'll get some good news today. I wouldn't hold my breath. But at the very least, I'm hoping that since Maryville High School, and we're always comparing ourselves to Maryville High School, because Maryville High School has gone with phase two, which is we're taking grades, it's, it's for real, that uh, we will be allowed to take start taking grades next week. Final questions. Okay. Bye.